In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will. Also, uh, it, you might have heard, because it kind of caught on a few, like a year or so ago, everyone started doing playthroughs of it for some reason, but there's a Dreamcast Berserk game called, like, Sword of the Berserk Guts is Rage. And, ah, the beast! Hold on, the beast! The beast! Yeah! It must be before this, then. So we saw a glimpse of him earlier. The beast is the... Not a split personality. Not an anthropomorphization. He's like the manifestation of all of Guts's darker nature. Like all of the pain and hatred and anguish he's gone through manifests itself in like this anti-conscious. That's how you can think of it. You know how most of us have a conscious, a conscience? Uh, this voice in the back of your head saying, hey, do the right thing. The beast is the opposite of that. He's the anti-conscience. He's the devil on your shoulder trying to tempt you with all the, the negative things you don't want to admit. I am the shadow, the true self. He's got his shadow! And you must conquer him to get your persona. Yeah. グリフィスを焦がれ続けるための生贄さ。消えろ。生贄ならもっといい使い道がある。no, you're not me! Stop it. <laughs> but Guts, it's only by admitting that those are your thoughts. That that is your true self, that you'll be able to conquer it and move forward and get a persona. What would Guts' persona look like? Probably like Wolf the Oh, he would get Fenrir. That's it. There you go. Guts' persona would be Fenrir. There you go. I just solved I just solved the the universe. So it must be before this level, because something happens here. Um that Dreamcast game, sort of the Berserk Guts' is Rage. Uh, that's canon. That's the story of what happens in that game is totally canon. Kitsuro Mura, the guy who makes Berserk, worked on that game. He helped write the story. He did some character designs for it. It got official designation. And there's even, like, a little note in the original publication of a couple of chapters of Berserk that's like, the game... The Berserk game happens in between these two chapters. So immediately before this chapter, this level, like after Guts leaves Godo's place with Casca, that's when that game happens. And you can totally look it, up, look up a little playthrough because it is canon, and it totally has the feel of Berserk. And I really like Puck's voice actor. I think that he gets the Puck voice down pretty well. Because that's the only time it could take place, because it's when Guts is still the Black Swordsman, 
and it's when he's wandering around with yeah with Casca and they're total broke. Like she's okay with his presence. Like he even puts his arm around her at one point and it's super adorable, but also tragic and disturbing, but adorable and awesome. So uh I, I was I was actually wondering like may, will they have like a little short level that's like Gu sort of the resort Guts's rage, a level d like referencing that game. That'd be cute, right? Just like one filler level that sort of references. That would be kind of a like have a, an enemy that's a mandragora. That'd be cute, right? And again, that game is totally canon. That that story happened. It's not fan fiction. The actual guy helped write it. Yeah, that even more like it's not just that he's trying to live for himself anymore. Like before, he could swing his sword with wild abandon because he didn't have to worry about nobody or nothing else. He was just fighting just to fight, like before. But now, he has that extra weight, where he's not just fighting for himself. Not only does he have to protect her and keep consideration for her safety, but he also needs to fight for his own survival all the harder, because he's the only one who can protect her. So he has that extra weight to his actions. Like, the burden is too much. He doesn't have the freedom to be like how he was before. And he's doubting his own, like, her safety around him when he's thinking of that goddamn beast. Those thoughts are in his head. So it's just so much shittery. That the poor guy has to deal with. All these lines are really great. All this, like, this monologue. Yeah, like, who, who knows? What would have happened if he had stayed with her? She could have possibly gotten used to him, and they could have, he could have helped her, and she could have helped him. You never know. But because of that choice he made, it cannot be said that they are better for it. Also, Puck's not supposed to be here with me, with you, yeah. when what's about to happen happens. Puck was somewhere else looking for her separately. It almost feels like overkill to use the cannons on humans. Baylet. Yes, let's collect a Baylet while this mission is happening, where we're trying to track down Casca. Uh, she's supposed to be naked because they tried to rape her. They tried to rape her, and she had a fucking PTSD flashback to the Eclipse. Masaka. 
And she's supposed to be naked right now. I feel like that's relevant. Oh, they totally skipped it, but he did bad that he did the bad touch. He did the bad touch to the Casca. Show us on the doll where 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 the beast of darkness touched you, Casca. Just everywhere. He totally gave in to gave in to that a little bit and started doing some things where it's like no guts, no means no guts. What are you doing? Fucking stop. Seriously. And so now after that after that she ain't okay with him no more. That's a that's a fu you lose all the trust you had after something like that happens. There's no fucking talking your way down from what happened there. And, again, they're not showing it, but, like, after that, Casca doesn't trust him being near her, so he, she's always, like, eh, trying to get away from him and trying to run away while they're being attacked nightly by fucking monsters and shit. Why were you fighting humans and not monsters? That's weird. Because that's actually what happened. They fought, like, they, they're attacked nightly by monsters and stuff, as they normally do. And so he has to drag her around, tied up. Like, tie her up, her hands together, and lead her around with a fucking rope. And it's really fucked up. And he's like, well, what am I supposed to do? And there was a part where, like, he gave in to the beast for a second and choked her ass out. And Puck's like, no, it's fine. You were just possessed, right? It wasn't your fault. And he's like, can I really just say that as an excuse? Uh, and I don't know what Puck's saying here, but this is like a few days later. Like, they've been wandering around with Casca all tied up for a couple days. And then Puck ran into them. And yeah, Puck. The, like, Puck and the Seedro basically are Link and Navi by this point in the story. They're always together. No, you smell bad. You have cooties. あ、やしいぜ。急に手のひら返した見てみよう。きっと好き見て踏ん張るつもりだぜ。なんて言ったって、そいつらは法王朝の。私は主でに原則した身。セキュラライズ。私は知りたいのです。私の姿、実は。And he's like, what? ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム。ワタファイ。ジャム
But when you think about it, even that is a significant step for guts, don't you think? That's a significant change. Because, yeah, when you think about it, guts, he would just fuck you. I don't got time for your bullshit. But the burden is such, like the burden of having to protect Casca and not being able to trust himself to keep her safe, both from what's attacking them and his own darker nature. He's like... When you think about it, that's kind of a big thing, to be able to rely upon others in that small way. Like, no one's saying it out loud, but he is saying, like, okay, I can't carry this on my own shoulders anymore. I gotta offload this. You guys will fucking carry some of this weight for me. This is also great. Here we go. This is almost. We're almost there. We almost got our full party. So, like, this is the party for, like, the rest of the fucking story. Up to the current chapter, it's Guts, Farney, Serpico, Casca, Puck, Isidro, and one other character. Like, that's this. Here we go. Dungeons and Dragons part, like, we all met at a tavern. <laughs> The new band of the hawk. That's kind of what it is. The new band of the hawk. Right here. Almost. And now since Serpico's a party member, let's go ahead and see what his fucking problem is. So we saw this from Farnese's perspective earlier. And now this is him. This is his his side of that event. Sanemma. Because the child of a heretic is just as much a heretic. Whole families would get burned at the stake. Because one was accused of being a heretic. One member of that family. And in her small way, that was Farnese's way of protecting him. And like I said before, Farnese is a fire. And Serpico is a moth drawn to that flame. There's more to it. I'm going to assume that this will show more of that of the back of of his backstory, because he gets like fucking like three chapters dedicated to his backstory. ファルネーゼ<笑> Daishin 
それにあの屋敷にはもう戻る気はないファルネーゼ様と出会ったのもちょうどこんな雪だった、okay, yeah, 雪倒れていたところを拾われその時からファルネーゼ様のものとなったバンディミオン家その財力は世界屈指諸国の王家にもその血筋を多く送り込み絶大な影響力を誇る名門中の名門しかし親の愛は娘を物で埋め尽くすことで示され広大な屋敷で野放しだった小さな暴君である彼女の常軌を逸した行動は人を遠ざけたしかし彼女は怯えて広大な And the only reprieve was the flames. They're cu- Ah,、oh, they're cutting out so much. I don't know if they're gonna get to it, but Serpico's mom was like, cra- was like infirm and like ill all the time and he had to take care of her. And she was like, I used to be a scullery maid or whatever and、uh, a nobleman fucked me. And that's your dad, your nobility. So you gotta have your head up tall. And Serpico finds out, like he puts it together, that Farnese's dad is his dad. He was the one who banged his maid, and that maid was Serpico's mom. So Farnese and Serpico are brother and sister, half brother and sister. But he also says, like, the reason he, that he is, a, like, is attracted to her is kind of because, like, she is just as damaged as he is. She's damaged in the same way. So he's like, yeah, I'll stick with you then. So he's like, yeah, I'll stick with you then. So he's like, yeah, I'll stick with you then. ケンじゃねえと意味ねえの。石の腕前なら実際大したもんだけどな。まともにやり合っちゃ体格で大人にかなうわけはねえからな。端っこさとこいつで俺は生き延びてきたのよ。<笑> 